Hello guys, welcome back to the part 7 of this tutorial series. Now as an example for today's tutorial, what I'm going to show you is how to create a simple automated purchasing machine from uh, from which you can purchase some stationary items, let's say like books, pens, pencils, uh, which can calculate finally the total amount uh, which you are supposed to pay. And thanks to this input function which we just discussed in the previous section, we are going to make this whole exercise a bit interactive. Now let's imagine a scenario where you are first greeted by the machine with some with a couple of uh, opening statements. Now rather than working in this uh, Python shell, I'm going to actually create a new script over here. And first let me go ahead and save this file. I'm going to name this as automatedpurchasingmachine.py. So as I told you, I'm going to open up the greeting with a couple of uh, lines like this. First I can say print. Hi. Welcome to the Welcome to the automated shopping system and on the next line I'm also going to add another line which says You may specify your orders in the next section and even I can actually leave a space after that just by keeping an empty string like this. Now if I try to run this, you can see that the first two lines display that Hi, welcome to the automated shopping system. Maybe I'll yeah, change it to be like that. And it says that you may specify your orders in the next section. Alright, so let's continue on with this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually ask the input from the user to see whether they really want to proceed or not. So I can say something like input similar to what we discussed last time during the previous section. I would say do you want to proceed? And I'm going to give the responses. There could be two responses either yes or no. So I would like the user to actually input this, but as you might remember, we need to save this into some sort of a variable. So I'm going to, let's say I'm going to name that variable as proceed. So after that, I'm asking proceed input. Do you want to proceed? Yes or no. Now let's run this one and see how it looks. Yes. Now you can see that we actually can type in yes, or if I run the script again, we can even type no and right now actually the code doesn't execute anything because we haven't programmed anything in and over here if you would like to actually leave some space for example let's say if I leave an empty space like this and if I press F5 now you can see that whenever we try to enter our response you actually see some sort of a space you can see that there is actually a space uh, getting added over here so it looks more clean rather than having to enter the response right beside this closing bracket. Alright, so over here I'm actually going to use something which I haven't taught you guys yet, which is the conditional if statement. Now I'm going to actually discuss this if if else statements in a much detailed manner in one of the upcoming uh, tutorials. But for the time being, just imagine that we can use these conditional statements in this way. If the person's response for the question. Now you can imagine that after the person enters their response for this question, it gets recorded into this proceed variable. So we can use this if conditional statements to check if the value of proceed equals equals yes, then we can ask the program to execute something. But in case if the responder's answer to this question happens to be no, we would also like to maybe display something, some, some kind of a closing statement. So the way to specify that using this conditional statement would be, we can say L if proceed equals equals no, all right, then execute whatever the thing that we would like to execute over here. Now let's say if the person said no, I would just like to display, display something like, yeah, we can just say thank, thank you for interest uh, see you next time something like that but this is only if the person said no now as you can imagine the code will read the code will run the first four lines 
and after that or based on the keyword that the responder type in it'll either execute this part of the code or this part of the code in case if the person says yes then the value of this proceed variable actually changes to be yes so that it'll execute this part of the code but in case if the person said no then it'll actually skip out this part and it'll directly go to this part and it'll actually ex execute this part. For the time being, don't bother too much about how these uh, conditional statements like if, elif statements work. Just at this stage, you can just count on what I'm saying because we have another exclusive part on these conditional statements for you guys as a part of this series and we'll be posting that in, in one of the upcoming tutorials. So now let's get back to the tutorial. Well, now my concern is actually if the person says yes, I would like to, let's say, create one variable called number of books and the statement which I would like to display would be something like this. I would like to say one book costs five, five dollars. How many books do you want? All right, now for the time being, we can actually run this and then test this out just to see how it works. Now you can see that the first three, first four lines are quite all right. And do you want to proceed? Now let's type no and see what happens. Yeah, you can see that whenever we type no, it says that thank you for your interest, see you next time. But in case if we happen to say yes, you can see that it actually shows the first question. One book costs five USD, how many books do you want? Let's say I would say 10 something. Since we do not have any continuation, it actually stops right there. So let's go ahead and put these other questions as well. Let's say I'm going to Let's say through this machine, we are only interested in selling books, pens, pencils, rulers, and maybe some highlighters, something like that. So I can say that the second question would be number number of pens. Just going to one pen costs, let's say 3.2, 20 USD. How many pens do you want? And let's say we have another item, which is pencils now one pencil costs let's say one usd how many how many pencils do you want and we also have number of rulers yeah i think this should be fine since we are trying to demonstrate how we can use this input function in python and over here if you would like to actually leave some space after this response you can just pass an empty string over here and the same goes to here as well so that our response will not actually appear sort of congested like this there will be some space in between. All right, so now let's run this one and see what sort of a response we get. All right, now in this case, I'm going to say proceed yes. And it says one book costs five USD. How many books do you want? Let's say six. One pen costs 320. I want maybe three pens. One pencil is one USD. Let's say I want two pencils and I want zero rulers. All right, now you can see that we have sort of an inventory over here. So now let's see how can we use this information in order to calculate the total price. Now I can say that the total cost equals to, we know that one, one book cost five USD. So the total cost for the books are going to be five into this number of books. So this is the total price for the books. And similarly, we can from here we know that one pen costs $320 and we, if we multiply it by the person's response of the number of pens, we get actually the total cost which pertains to the number of, uh, number of pens. And over here we multiply one by the number of pencils in order to get the cost of all the pencils. And over here, we multiply 0 0.5 by the number of rulers, which will provide us with the total cost for the rulers. All right, so far it looks all right. And now if I say, maybe I don't have to leave that much of space like this. We can now say that print the total cost is, and I'm going to add this particular value into this. Now, right now, actually, there are a couple of mistakes in this code itself. So let's tackle them one by one. But before that, we will close this and we'll actually try to run and see what sort of error messages we get. 
yeah again i'm going to proceed with this by saying yes i want let's say five four six and two rulers all right so first it says the total cost and this statement can't multiply sequence by non int of type float all right now i think you can recall that whenever we enter things in using these input functions and when we try to save it into a variable you can see that actually it's getting saved as a string so over here when i ask the program to multiply 5 by the number of books it doesn't really matter how much how many books the person enters over here let's say if the person enters 10 what this is now trying to do is it's actually trying to multiply 10 by 5 but the only issue is this 10 is actually not really a numerical figure it's a string so you cannot multiply strings with numerical figures right so that's why i told you we whenever we whenever we work with numerical figures depending on the circumstances you might have to convert this on the fly like this into an integer especially in this case because over here we are actually trying to do a multiplication using that numerical figure so i'm going to convert all of these on the fly like this in this manner all right now we'll see we'll try to run this one and see whether we get any error or not i'm going to say yes Yeah, now over here, you can see that we have an error with this particular line. Now, put your attention to this one. This total cost variable right now, if I try to check check that, you can see that the total cost is properly calculated. But if you try to check the type of this total cost, you can see that right now it's a float. And in this code, I'm actually trying to add a float into a piece of string over here. And that cannot be actually done. So what I have to do is if I, if I really need to add this 43.6 and display it along with this piece of uh, string, what I can do is I can actually on the fly convert this into a string by saying, take the str of the total cost and add that to this particular string which is basically a concatenation of strings together so in this case if i run this and if i say yes let's say three four two one it can do the computation for us and it can actually provide the correct value the total cost is 30.3 maybe i can add us dollars all right if i run again and I can proceed with yes. Yeah. You can see that the total cost is now 40.1 USD. Now let's say if I were to run this program again, and if I say no, you can see that it actually gives the statement saying that thank you for your interest and see you next time. So pretty cool, isn't it? So I think now you can get an idea how how creative we can be with this input function, in, input uh, inbuilt function of Python in order to create this kind of uh, interactive session. And in your own time, you can actually try to be more creative and see how you can actually develop this simple piece of code into something which can sort of uh, serve a different purpose or which can serve the same purpose, but maybe in a different way. So that's about it for this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.